Hello, I'm James Ingram for AutoControls.org. Welcome to our first three-rail automatic control video. The amazingly clever layout shown in this video was designed and built by a gentleman named Tally Ober, whom you saw earlier in the video in the blue shirt, and his website is EagleLineRailroad.com. This video shows three O-gauge three-rail trains operating on the same track, being controlled just by insulated block sections with no relays and no electronics. Note that I did not design this system, nor did I build any of it. I just came along at, uh, onto it as an observer and recorded it with my iPhone. I have seen these insulated block systems used for three-rail control before for controlling two trains, but I did not realize it could be extended to three trains, which is what you're going to see in this video. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the video. For orientation purposes of this layout, notice there's a, a, a big green derrick here. That's cranky, the derrick and Thomas, the tank engine terms. And then over here is a lake. So that identifies the side of the layout that we're on. What we have here is three Thomas, the tank engine type O-gauge trains all running on the same loop. And we've got two crossovers. There's one crossover here and another crossover here. We have two crossovers, and then we have two stop blocks and two control blocks, which control the two stop blocks. Now, as you see the layout right here when the screen capture was made, the two blue engines are stopped on the stop blocks, and the red engine is moving. That is to say, this blue diesel is stopped over here on stop block one, and it's not very visible, but there's a blue Thomas the tank engine stopped back here on stop block two. Meanwhile, James is still running. You can see James is almost ready to enter that control block. Now, the, as far as the electrical wiring of these things, the green rails, the single green rails, and the double red rails of the stop block, those are all electrically isolated, so they normally don't have power going to them. However, when an engine enters a control block, its metal wheels conduct power from the right rail, which is always powered, over to the green control wheel. And then that sends power via this yellow wire to the stop block. It allows this engine that's stopped in the stop block to start moving. And likewise, when a, the, another engine hits this other control block, that sends power from the right rail, which is normal normally powered all the time over to this left green rail, the control wheel rail, energizes that and sends power down this yellow wire to this pair of red rails for this stop block. Looking at the sequence of uh, things happen, there's some notes up here about that. The two blue locos are stopped in the stop blocks. When this moving red loco enters a control block, it'll start the diesel up, and then the diesel will start down this track, and when it comes to this green control wheel in control block two, it'll send power over here and start this blue Thomas engine up, so they'll be moving. Meanwhile, uh, James will have gone around behind here and got trapped in this stop block. Uh, this blue diesel will have gone around this loop and got trapped in this stop block two, and meanwhile, Thomas, which was back here, will have gone all the way around here and around this loop, and it'll be coming into the control block one, and the, the sequence will start all over again. Now, a couple comments on the, the green rails. These green control rails have to be long enough that they send power down this wire for a long enough amount of time to get these engines out of the stop block. And I'm kind of guessing at the location of the of the control blocks and the stop blocks actually because I didn't design this layout. I didn't build it. All I did is came up came along at the show and recorded it. But watching the video, it looks like this control rail starts right about where that rock or whatever that is there. If you if you make a mental note of that rock, that's about when where uh, when the engine gets here, you'll see this engine begin to move. And 
Likewise, if you look about where the water, the leg of the water tower is, right about there, where, where the green line begins, when the engine that comes out of the stop block reaches that point, you can see this, this stop block over here is energized and this engine will begin to move. This clip will be in slow motion. We're starting with just about the same condition shown in the previous picture. Uh, this blue diesel, which I believe is Sydney, is on the stop block. Thomas is on the uh, stop block back here. And James is coming. James is moving. It'll be coming around the corner toward the control block. Remember, the control block is here. Control block is here. The stop block is here, and the stop block is here. So let's start these up. Here they are running at slow motion. You can see James will hit the control block about there, which will start up the blue diesel Sydney. When that gets over to about here, watch back in the rear. You can see Thomas started up there back in the rear. Now James will come around and get stopped at that stop block. Uh, the diesel Sydney will come around here and get stopped at the stop block number two back there. There it can go. You can see Sydney just stopped. Meanwhile, Thomas is coming around heading for control block one, which starts around here, and that'll start James up. And, and now the, the sequence is repeating just for the different set of uh, engines. There goes James over that control block, which started Sydney, the diesel. Thomas will come around here and get stopped at the stop block. James will come around the back and get stopped back here at that stop block. Now, those two, those two trains will wait while Sydney travels around this loop and comes around to the control block. Again, remember the control block one is about where this, this rock is there. You can see Thomas started up about when Sydney got to there. The control block two is about here. You can see when Thomas got there, James back in the rear started up. Now we've got the diesel Sydney coming back and parking on the stop block. Thomas is heading for the stop block back in the rear, and James is coming around headed for the control block. And this is essentially one complete cycle. We're right back where we started. Uh, when the video first began. Now we're into the second cycle. This clip lasted long enough to go through part of the uh, second cycle, and I'll just let it run till it gets to the end. You can see there, there James stopped on the stop block. And Sydney's headed back for stop block number two. And stop there. Now Thomas is headed around for the control block, which again starts right in here, and that'll start James up, which is on stop block one. There's where control block two begins. When, when James went into that, it started Sydney, which is back on stop block number two. Now Thomas is going to come around and stop at stop block one. James back in the rear will stop on stop block number two back there behind the station in the uh, diesel Sydney's coming around headed for control block number one. And again, right about right about here is where that control block, I believe, begins. Now Thomas is headed for the control block two, which started James back in the rear. James will come around. That's the end of the clip there.
that start to frame in front of the station. So we've got diesel and these speed engines. Now the diesel will come around and stop and it's in the stop section. And then the diesel will wait for that uh, red speed engine goes around in front of the school bus and then uses the blue diesel. If you go to the uh, website autocontrols.wordpress.com, which is part of the autocontrols.org website, you should see a page similar to what you see here. And up here, there's a tab V667 three rail, three trains. This is the tab for the the uh, part of the web page that supports this video. Also, there's a link down here that goes the same place. Notes for the video 667 uh, tally over three train three rail control system 
But if we click on this tab here, it takes us to this page for video 667. Uh, and scrolling down this page, we see the same drawings as you see in the video. There's, there's the three that I created, and here's the three that I took from Joseph Rampola's YouTube video to show the details of how this is done. Down at the bottom, there's some links to related videos and related articles. But if we go back up here, any one of these drawings, there's a note here that says click on any of the below images to open them larger. So if we click on this drawing, you can see it, it opens it in a bigger size. You can do with that with any of these drawings on this page. And then if you wanted to download it, if you right, right mouse it, you should get a menu, something like this that says uh, Save Image As. If you click on that, it'll, it'll allow you to save it to your, your desktop. Now here we are on the web page again. As we scroll down to these drawings, This is the first one. We looked at this one earlier just to review this. Here's our two control blocks in green and our two stop blocks in uh, red. Now let's go to the next drawing, which is this one. And that one is essentially the same as the previous one. I just kind of made it into a, a sketch without the picture. And again, you see the two control blocks in green, the two uh, stop blocks in red and these dotted lines that depict the electrical wire connecting the control blocks to the stop blocks. It's a yellow one for uh, block block set one, and it's an orange one connecting control block two to stop block two. Now what we'll do for the next sketch, we'll take the same thing and we'll kind of unfold it so it's, it's one big circle. Here's our what we call our sequence diagram, our third drawing. We'll make this larger, and this shows the same three engines. Uh, here's our red James engine, our, our blue uh, diesel engine, S Sydney, I believe it was, and here's our lighter blue Thomas the Tank engine, and this shows the same spot as where those video sequences started with these two engines in their stop blocks and the red James engine approaching control block one. So it, it is part one shows here of this. These two engines are stopped and James is moving. These little lines behind James indicate that, indicate that he's moving, that, that that engine is moving. So the next thing that happens, we'll go to part two, is James enters the control block one, which energizes the stop block rails, a stop block one, which allows Sydney the diesel to pull out onto the main line, and you can see he's now moving again, depicted by these lines, and he's headed for control block two. So the next thing that happens, part three, uh, James is still traveling towards stop block one, but now Sydney has gotten on the control block two, so he's sending wire through this uh, power through this orange wire to stop block two, which has allowed Thomas to leave stop block two. So going to part Part four of this, uh, we've got James has traveled on the stop block one, and uh, Sydney is approaching stop block two. While meanwhile, Thomas has traveled further down the main line. Now going on to part five, we've got we've got James still in stop block one. Sydney has entered stop block two and has stopped. So these two engines are and they're now stopped, and Thomas is on the main line. Uh, still heading for control block one. Now this is a little longer what what's here compared to the actual video, but it's the same idea. Now part six, we've got these two engines still on the stop block, but we've got uh, Thomas heading for the control block. So it's basically the, the same thing as where we started, except the engines have all moved, moved forward one position, so to speak. And one more comment down here. See if we can scroll. If we look at the bottom of the same drawing, we see a little sketch down here showing the uh, three rails of the three rail track. Our direction is from left to right as indicated by this uh, purple arrow. The center rail is continuous around the whole layout. There's no need to interrupt the center 
rail anywhere. And the green and the red rails are, are isolated rails that normally will have no power going to them. And as mentioned before, when the engine comes along here, uh, it'll, it'll connect the, the right rail to the green left rail via the metal wheels on the locomotive and put power in the control block, which will send it down to the stop block. So one, now one more thing to mention, if you tried to run a single train on this layout, it wouldn't work because your single train would come along, go over the control block, enter the stop block and stop and be waiting for another engine to release it. But that other engine is never going to come along if you're just running a single train. So what you can do is add a switch to the, uh, uh, switch to the layout for single train operation, which is what's shown here. And this would be normally open when you're running multiple trains, but if you're running a single train, you could close this switch, which would connect the, the left rail on the main line part to the green control block left rail, so there would always be power on this green rail, and thus via the wire, there would always be power on the red stop block rail, so this would allow you to run a single train, and if you had multiple uh, blocks like shown up here, you'd, you'd do this at each block. Now here's one of uh, the first of Joseph Rampola's three drawings that we're using here. I put a note down here. These three drawings are from Joseph Rampola's 2014 YouTube video titled Insulated Rail Control of Lionel Hand Cars. Uh, but what he shows, again, he shows how the rails need to be insulated in your uh, green rail to control rail that's got to be insulated from the ties. That's the most difficult one because you've got to insulate it at the ends. And he shows plastic pins here, and you've got to insulate it from the ties because otherwise power would be conducted from the left rail over to the right rail and get into this rail. And notice he's showing the, on his sketch, he's showing the right rail being the control rail. And up till now, I've showed the left rail being the control rail. And, and it doesn't matter. It can be either the left rail or the or the right rail, it works either way. Just one of them's got to be insulated. Uh, and then here's our wire that goes over to the to the uh, stop block. The stop block is shown over here in red. And that's relatively easy because you just need to insulate the two ends of the thing. He shows four plastic pins here to insulate these two rails. And the, uh, the metal ties, he says metal ties connect outside rails together. You want the rails connected, so you don't need to mess around with insulating the rails from the ties. It's just normal normal track, except insulated at each end to, to uh, isolate it. Now, as this uh, little sketch shows, we show a blue engine stopped on the stop block. Uh, that could be Sydney in our video, and the red engine, that could be James in our video. We show the red engine moving toward the control block, and again, as before, when when this red engine gets onto the control block, it'll conduct power from the uh, rail on the outside that has the power over to the control rail, which will energize the control rail, send power down to the wire to the uh, two stop rails, which will start this engine up. Now, one thing we haven't talked about too much in this video, the length of the stop block. This, this was done for a hand car video, so it doesn't need to be real long, but if you're running full length trains, this stop block would need to be considerably longer, probably. Uh, my friend Rob Mueller, who, who was the narrator in the Pine Summit video that showed two trains running with this type of a system, says told me that often Lionel trains have metal couplers and they, they conduct the power through the whole length of the train. So you might have to have a stop block that's the length of the train plus a little longer to allow for momentum. This is something you would need to experiment with, and um, I can't be any help here because I have no real experience with doing this in O-Gage. I'm just putting this video together as an observer. Here's the uh, second of the Joseph Rampola drawing showing the control section, and we again, we have our, uh, our green control rail shown here. Uh, and we, he shows it being insulated by paper. You see his notes, paper, paper, everywhere there's a tie. you got to get this thing, as mentioned before, you got to get this control rail 
insulated from the ties, and then he shows it being insulated at the end by uh, plastic pins. And one other video I watched on this topic he mentioned he talked about a donor section. He said what you could do is take a normal piece of track, like say one like this over here, you take take it apart and take the center rail off the track because Lionel has the center rail insulated from the ties. You, you can use those pieces of insulation that Lionel used on the center rail, move them over to the, to the um, insulate where you want the insulated rail to be and use those, reuse those those pieces of insulating paper that Lionel used to make your insulated rail for your control section. So, and, and again, what happens when your the engine comes along? This is the way this is shown in Joe's video as the, the uh, trains are traveling this way from right to left. Uh, as a train comes along, hits the control section, power transfers from the outside rail, which is always powered here, transfers over to the insulated control rail, then goes down this wire, which is going over to the stop section to transfer power to the top stop section. Here's the uh, third of the Joseph Rampola drawings. This shows the, the stop section and the, the two red rails that comprise the uh, stop section. This section is normally dead. And it's only it's only going to be activated when wire comes in, in when power comes in via this wire coming over from the control section. Now this is only insulated at the ends by the, the pins. You can see Joseph is showing uh, four plastic pins to insulate the two outside rails, and the center rail is continuous uh, on on this whole system. You never have to interrupt the center rail. And you you leave this one connected by the plastic, uh, the the metal rail joiners. In other words, you don't have to do anything with insulating the the rails from the from the uh, ties and this. They because you want the you want when the power comes in on this wire to this rail, which is the inside rail shown here. You want it to be conducted via the metal tie to the outside rail. Now, as far as the length. As mentioned, you probably got to experiment with the length. Uh, Joseph is just using one track length here because he's stopping hand cars. In the, in the video, part of the video earlier, where well, it shows Tally Ober's system running with the three Thomas engines, uh, he used relatively short sections to stop those trains. And he may be using cars with <clears throat> plastic wheels and plastic couplers. We don't know for, for sure. Here's Joseph Rampola's 2014 handcar video on YouTube. This is where the previous three drawings were obtained. If we look at this little layout, he's got two sections of a control block, and I believe it starts here and extends two sections down to here. And there's the wire connecting the control block over to the stop block, and the stop block, I believe, starts here and ends here, one section long. Let's start these up and watch them. You can see when the hand car, uh, when a hand car gets to right about here, the beginning of the control block, the hand car and the stop block will start up, and this could be extended to to uh, trains as well as hand cars. You would just need longer, longer sections of the control block and the stop block. Joe's Christmas channel is a Christmas garden, and I encourage you to explore his channel. He's got a lot of interesting automation videos you can look at. But uh, that's kind of the idea behind it is to have a display and to have people and, and share with them and just enjoy being with folks. So welcome to the Pine Summit Railroad. Okay. We've got a system at the station here on the inside track. It's here two trains uh, running there. Uh, a diesel stop right now. It took off. Uh, a steam engine will come around in a minute and stop. He, he's got a very simple relay system here. Uh, he'll explain it in a minute, which uh, keeps these two trains spaced and stopping at the station. 
there's a steam engine just left. There's a diesel coming around. He's actually shorting the two rails on the other side of the layout, which is essentially the go point. There's a diesel just left. Now the steam engine will come around. You see there's two trains running on this loop, and uh, each of them makes a stop at the station for a minute and then takes off again. Okay, we're looking at the station over there where the trains were stopping and starting. Now we're gonna we're gonna come over to the other side of the layout where the uh, block is that's causing the stopping and starting. So we come back along the track and we're gonna go over to here. And now we've we've got Rob in the camera. Basically, there's a piece of track over here with a gap, and uh, it shorts from one side to the other. And I'll let Rob take it from there. The inside rail of the three is the one that's an insulated section. It's just like a typical Lionel insulated section. There's no current to this track at all. The hot wire goes to the center rail, the ground rail goes to the outside rail, and there's nothing for the inside rail. Now this inside rail is attached, I have a wire running from it over to the corresponding ground rail over by the station. And but as a train pulls into the station, there is no ground over there, so it stops. And as soon as the other train comes into this block, the wheels act like a switch, and it takes the current from the outside rail through the axle to the inside rail, which now puts ground in that rail, and when that ground is then carried by the wire over to that section, and then the ground activates the train over there. Put your uh, hand on the other end of the block if you could, so they can see where that's the start of it, where you had your hand. The end of it here. Okay. And the other end is. It's back here. Okay. Right here. And that's enough of a distance so that it gives. Me plenty of time, gives that train that's parked at the station enough time to get out of the station uh, before the train that's here leaves this section. Right, because if, if this block here is not long enough, it won't get that train started, right? right. Yep. It has to stay active long enough to give that train time to get out of it. Okay. But well on a, on a good sized loop of track because the, you have plenty of spacing between the trains. If you were in a tighter situation, you might want to have to depend on, on relays or something a little more a little more positive, but this this works very well in this situation. It's, it's simple because there's nothing to go wrong. Also using that uh, insulated rail section to control these two trains on the inside of the loop. You see that diesel pulling into the siding. Uh, when that goes down, uh, down here near the spacing, it will go to the loop section. Steam engine. 
Williams and goes all the way around the, the uh, layout and comes in and it has its own trip section which is starting to do this so that they alternate again using the three-day uh, principle of making that, that steam engine is coming out of the tunnel on the inside of the track and it's coming in the inside and you can see wherever the trip section is it will cause the uh, yellow diesel on the inside to start up.